this was an important conversation. And um, I thought it was important to also um, you know, get, use the opportunity to convey the message that a lot more can happen than is happening, right? So by way of introduction, do you want to like, tell us a bit more about you and, and what you do? Tell us a bit of the journey, where you started from, where you are now, the motivations. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks a lot. First, I'd like to say thank you to you for organizing this event and to your team members also and to all the sponsors and supporters of this event. Thank you so much for, for having me and for showing me this honor. Thank you. And to everyone that's here who stayed till this time, thank you so much. Please put, the, put your hands together for yourself. Thanks a lot. Okay, so my, my journey started in 2016. I came first into the crypto space and I was still a student. I was in University of Port Harcourt. Um, I was in my 300 level. And the only thing that brought me here was I was looking for money because <laughs> I was in charge of my own education. So I was also looking for money to pay my school fees and stuff. And um, somebody told me about a platform that I could just write and earn crypto. And because I'm also a rapper, so I'm a music person. So I, I was posting my songs, the lyrics to them, my normal everyday life. And, you know, people would upvote. And I got into the communities, would, would join ourselves in communities where we would upvote ourselves, would write our stories. And I was, I was getting some funds. I think I, I'll never forget the first 50,000 Naira I made from, <clears throat> from the platform. I converted the crypto to Naira. We all had... Uh, uh, communities where we're buying and selling crypto. Mm -hmm. So that period, it was just because of money. I was just looking for money. So if you tell me about the blockchain technology, I say, I'm looking for money to eat. <laughs> I'm looking for money to, to pay school fees. Leave research first on that one. So when I finished um, from the university in 2017, it was, it was like, okay, my head is clear now. So um, what next? You know, I did business management. So what next? I've always wanted to do um, business management. And it, it still took me a while before I decided I was going to understand this technology. 2017, I had, you no, know, I was just dealing with life issues. It was until 2018 that I started researching and understanding what is the technology? How is blockchain different from crypto? I started seeing that there were a lot of other things that you could do with it. I still didn't pay attention to it till 2019, 2019, towards the end of 2019. That was when I started, I think that was the year that I made a decision that, okay, I'm a business developer, but I'm going to do business development in this blockchain space. So um, after making that decision, the next step was to get accurate information. All the info that I had gotten about the space was from a point of a user perspective. I wanted to get information from the point of a builder. So who are the people building in the space? What blockchain companies can I work with? And that's how I met Algorand. I started um, working with them as an ambassador. And that, that was in 2020. I, the, the information that I got, the knowledge of how the technology works and the things you could do with it was as a result of me working with, with that company. And I just wanted to volunteer, but later on they began paying us and it was amazing. So. Having understood the technology, I said, fine, so we're going to build with this. There were two platforms I wanted to build. First was a crypto asset management platform. And next was an NFT platform. Because even that year, I, when I was doing research, I was looking for platforms that I could sell my art in. I was looking, okay, how can blockchain and music merge? And that's how I discovered NFTs. Back then in 2020, we were doing things on Ethereum chain with NFTs, playing some game, five games before you know the boom came in 2021. And I got to find out all these things. I said, okay, we'll build with them. So 2021, I started Crypto Smart in February. We were just providing asset management services, helping people. Another thing I understood was people didn't understand, especially Nigerians, they always approached crypto like Ponzi. So somebody tells you bring hundred dollars, you make you make one thousand dollars, and you you think yes, it's right, and it's possible. You'd see it during the bear market. A lot of crazy things happened. In the, in, sorry, during the bull market, a lot of crazy things happened. We're seeing one thousand x profits. So you would see that, but you didn't know that that was for a short period of time, and people were losing money. So we started Crypto Smart to help people understand. First of all, finance principles. What kind of money do you put into crypto? 
or um, how's your income like? You need to have a location for investment if you want to invest. And that, that's, that is that allocation you put into crypto? We started doing that. We started teaching people how to trade, OTC trades, normal crypto trades. That was what we're doing. And we got to the point where we wanted to start building blockchain products. The first challenge that I had was the challenge of developers. In fact, I told you about the NFT platform I wanted to, to build, yeah. Clip. I started that in April 2021. The, the biggest challenge we had was development. We had given what sourced it, and it, it's, it's one of the reasons for the stall that we had in the project. The developer didn't know what to do, and then again, we didn't have enough money to start hiring developers from outside the country. Mm -hmm. So we had another, you know, we had another innovative project that I wanted to put out, and it's called BitSave, the savings protocol. So I said, before we do this, we have to get the tech aspect right. So we started calling for uh, developers to work with us. I had Web2 developers come in. We also had some Web3 developers come in. One of the first challenges is that they like to work alone. And I said, we need to change that thing. You can't go find this space if you always want to work alone. So let's begin to change this. Put them in teams. Um, taught them how to go through Web3 documentations. How to find out what you are looking for. And then taught them how to get to Discord channels. How to bug the developers that are on the channels. Oh, I'm trying to do this. How to arrange your conversation in such a way that somebody can follow you and understand, okay, this is where the issues you're, you're having. And we did that um, towards the end of 2021 um, into 2022. By the time our developers had you know, gotten some understanding about the space, then I said, fine, let's start um, a not-for-profit. And that not-for-profit is called Borderless. So I understand very well the greatest challenge in this space and also the challenge with adoption is a lot of our people are not building products or they don't have the ability to build products that can solve our problems here. Yeah, look, immediate problems. Yes. So I thought, let's begin raising developers. And that's how we started Borderless in um, last year, June. And it's been, it's been one year later. We've had our challenges. Um, we, ha we, had, we had people who didn't know that tech was hard. So people will go on Twitter and okay, and and, and that's that, that that's the next question I wanted to ask you, right? Um, so from zero to one, how hard is it? <laughs> Two. I was I wasn't expecting that. So so from zero to one, it's as hard as two, right? Okay, so what you're saying is don't bother, don't try, don't even try. No, 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 that's not what I'm okay, saying. Okay, because that's what I want to <laughs> No, 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 that's right? not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is don't expect it to be easy. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's this thing when you go on Twitter, or because, I'm saying Twitter because that's the that's the popular, that's the yeah. space for, for tech and for crypto. You go there and you see people talking about, oh, how they made their first 10K, they yeah. made their first 100K, they made their first 1K and all. They don't tell you about the, they don't tell you the, the back story. Some of them have been developing since secondary school. Yeah. You just got out of university and you're thinking of getting into tech and you think it's the same roadmap that you both will take. And then you come into a program at Borderless and you're expecting, oh, by the time I'm done, I will get, I will apply to different companies and I'll get my first $1,000 salary. And you start paying $2,000. And you know the funny thing, one month into the program, you are, you are like, ah, is this thing that hard? And you go, and you give up. And don't don't expect it to be something that's just so easy. And then again, don't just come for the money. There's yes, so there's money in this space. There's mm -hmm. there's a lot of money in this space. But if you come in just because of the money, when you get challenges, you would you fall out. I, I usually give this example. I said a lot of the big products that you people see today, the Facebooks that you talk about, the Googles that you talk about, or the Zoho's that are all, here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All over this, but if you read the stories of the founders, it wasn't just because of the money that it came in. They were trying to solve a problem. They were asking, why is this thing happening like this? Why aren't they we able to, to do it? Something. They're looking to change something. And then they put their all in it. You hear things about how people started their stuff. From, yes, they got, they got some, some of the persons would have gotten um, some sort of seed funding from their parents or whatever. But they put in the work. It wasn't the money that brought them in at the first place. But they just wanted to solve a problem. And that's it. So if you come into the space, just money is good, yes. But it's not, it's not enough to last, to, to help you last through the different challenges that would come. Awesome. Um, we can't exhaust this conversation. Borderless is coming up. 
But our next conference is coming up. What, what date is that and how, how okay. do people join and how do people also join Borderless community as okay. well? Okay, so I'll start with the developers program. So we started doing something recently. We started training university students for free for to learn tech skills. So there are five courses that we that we have available. And um, as long as you're a student in any of the university or you just graduated maybe two years out of it, you can apply for the program. We'll take you in, you don't have to pay anything. What happens is we raise money through other means to fund it so that the students wouldn't need to pay anything. So the next cipher sessions, they're called cipher sessions. The next cipher session is in January, but registrations would open in December. Okay. And then we have the annual events. We have the annual tech event that we have um, every year. Last year we had it, and then this year we're having it again, and it's gonna happen in Aztec. Okay. And it is um, on the 4th of November, it is Saturday. So I think it's 28 days from today. today. First Saturday of November, that's when we'll be having the, the event. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carla, for coming here. Thank you, sir. And, and for, for, for doing what you're doing and blessing the community with the opportunity to deepen the ecosystem. Thank you.